So welcome back to Tech Dudes Weekly. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about the uh, gaming religious war that's out there. Um, AMD, Intel, uh, NVIDIA, you know, mix and mash parts when you're building your own PC. Um, so this is one that we're going to actually get into a little bit talking about AMD, the Ryzen 7 8700G. So it's integrated graphics to the main processor. Um, you know, we started off, hey, I really like this. And then the more we read about it, the more reviews we read, we actually see the opinion of why it's averaging around three out of five stars. So we sort of get it and everything. Um, let me bring up a uh, quick web page here, Dave, and then maybe you can jump in and talk about it a little bit. Yeah, that's cool. Yes, we found this on Tom's Hardware. And, and the opening statement on, on, the, on Tom's Hardware is AMD Ryzen 7 8700G review, uh, 1080p capable gaming com, uh, comes to integrated graphics. This is a, I want to say a game changer for integrated APUs, um, but it's it's got some pros and some cons to it. And Tom's goes over this pretty well, but there's still some wishy-washy on this depending on on where you go. I mean, Tom's puts it at, you know, best IGP performance on the market, which it really is. If you're looking at an integrated APU on a processor right now for 1080p gaming, nothing crazy. This is your bang for the buck. Um, passable 1080, I would say it's more than passable. This is where I disagree a little bit with Tom's hardware. Um, solid 720, but yeah, I don't think even 720 is in a conversation about PC gaming right now anyway. Um, Hyper RX support, that's cool. Bundled coolers, yeah, it comes with the Wraith cooler. And then power efficiency. It is a fairly low-powered processor. But here's where, if you're in the AM5 platform right now, is here was where we're almost going back three years with the price gouging. Um, higher DDR5 pricing. You don't have to buy really, really fast DDR. You can run 5600, 5800 uh, megahertz DDR5 uh, RAM in this, which is cool. Um, no eight gig options. Yeah, okay, I get that. You're gonna start out a minimum of 16 gig with something like this. Me, preferably, if I'm going with an integrated APU, I'm doubling my memory footprint just to give me more system memory that I can throw to the APU. Um, AM5 motherboards right now remain pricey. If you get any of what I'm gonna call the gaming motherboards, you're gonna be a minimum 250. And I think that's mediocre at a board price. I've seen some 279, 325. You know, above that, it's just getting freaking ridiculous on an AM5 platform. I think over time, they're going to come down. Um, if you go back to, say, AM4, you could get a really nice AM4, say, a 5800X or something like that, um, and put a, like, a NVIDIA 3058 gig. For God's sake, don't use the 6 gig card. because That's a big old POS. I still think this has some merit in there. And, yeah, it's... It's not going to be for somebody who's got to have a 4080 with 12 gig of memory or 16 gig of memory or 4090 with 24. I just don't think that's the conversation piece here. I think this is a really good processor. The problem is everything else in this ecosystem is getting ridiculously priced still. I don't know. I, I like it. I've got a 5700G, which is three years old, and it still runs great. This will blow the pants off a 5600G all day long. Yeah, I think the thing we ran into is that, you know, again, we I think we started off liking this more, and then the more we read, we were like, eh, well, maybe there's some other places where you could actually spend similar money and do a little bit better. You know, I, I, if you look back at a, you know, a 13th gen Intel processor, you know, you can get those relatively inexpensive now with the 14th gen really hitting the market hard. Yeah. Thing. And then uh, add on top of that, like a 3000 series NVIDIA board. I mean, yeah, granted, it's not going to suck down, you know, it's, it's the power. I mean, it's this thing only pulls like 65 watts compared to what we're talking about there with those other two. Now, but um, price for price, now if you're not worried about wattage and plugging it in, uh, you can probably definitely outbeat it performance-wise for similar money. And, you know, I, I have to throw out there, too, that, you know, you can get into a 4000 series pretty good good gaming laptop right now like an rog or something like that i mean i've seen those go sub 800 dollars when you catch them on sale and uh yeah, the blue remember before christmas this. the uh acer predator for a thousand dollars on the 1600 laptop yeah that was a neo 16 i believe right yeah. that had that had a 13th gen core i7 yeah, 13 700 h and a 4060 uh with eight gig of ram on it 
Yeah, and uh, actually, yeah, that's right. And then it came uh, stock with 16 gigs right in the uh, the laptop. And yeah. the neat thing about some of those, the you know, the especially the uh, Acers, and uh, you know, I had it with the Acer. What was it, a Helios or something like that? And then, yeah. um Oh no, the Nitro Five. That was yeah. The, yep. Thing, the Nitro Five. That one, uh, you can I mean, you can pull the back off of it and add memory, add you know another uh, you know some SSD. It was a good laptop. Nothing. And this one, you know, the one we just talked about, the Predator Neo 16. Same boat, nothing. A couple of screws pop off the back, and you can do some upgrades. So I, I don't know, nothing. I mean, like I said, I like this when we first read about it. I was thinking sub eight hundred dollars to build a okay gaming rig. I mean, this is the casual gamer. That's us, nothing. Um, yeah. But I, I don't know. The more I think about it, you can spend a few more dollars or even similar money, and probably do a little bit better. Yeah, don't try to compare this to the forty eighties. Don't even get into the forty seventies. I would compare this to a potential 3060 and not a TI, just a straight old 3060 on a 3000 series card. Um, everybody's going to go, well, I got to have the ultra speeds. No, run this at 1080p, run it on mid to high settings. And I think you're going to be fine with this one. Um, again, your biggest problem is going to be all the peripherals around it, your motherboard, your memory, everything else is going to be fairly inexpensive. So um, I would say give it a shot. I, I would put this on our list of it's good enough especially for a home theater PC. Um, if you're going to build something for the kids and you don't want to go all out and they've got to play, I, I don't know, Roblox or something like that, I guarantee this is going to be a killer machine for, you know, a 10 to 13 year old playing Roblox all day long. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, or, you know, for those of you that still uh, are okay with the laptop space, watch for Best Buy or Newegg or, you know, Amazon to throw one of those ROG laptops on sale. Yeah. Catch that one under 800 bucks and you'll put yourself in a 40, uh, you know, a 40, 60 or somewhere in that range and then with a 13th gen Intel processor and probably either eight or 16 gigs of RAM upgrade it yourself if you need be. And then you still be under a thousand dollars for probably a much better machine, but still something yeah. to know. And, and don't, again, don't 100% go and go, I got to have one of these now. Do some homework. You can still, AM, the big thing about AM5 is it's right now future proof. AM4, which is the old generation, which was like the 5800X and so forth on there and 5700G, they're not making any more updates for it. You're locked into that platform. That's it. Here, if you went into this process or got an AM5 motherboard, you're going to be fine down the road. For how long they're going to run on this platform or the AM5 footprint? Who knows? I think it's going to be there for a while. But depending on where your budget's going to be, take a look. AM4 is still viable. AM5, if they get the motherboard prices down and DDR5 memory goes down, I think this is a really good machine for everyday usage or just casual gaming to your point. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at it. Don't worry about whether it's an ultra setting or whatever. It's 1080p. A lot of people still game in 1080p. So. Yeah, we're, we're hoping, you know, folks will jump on this one again. You know, gaming's always been a religious war. You know, people have their opinions. And I think, uh, you know, it really comes down to how much you want to spend. Yeah. But, uh, you know, for those who don't mind jumping in the comments, uh, please do so. If you think you got, you know, what's the best rig you think you could build uh, parts wise under thousand dollars, we'll say. Uh, we'd love to hear it and I think definitely, uh, you know, get that uh, chatter going back and forth. So uh, jump in the comments. Uh, let us know your thoughts. Uh, subscribe if you like this and everything. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll uh, have some good chatter going back and forth. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, all.